Hi there, Steve Arterburn here, and welcome to the New Life Steve Arterburn Show. I don't know what it is. But anyway, hey, I do know this. Yesterday, uh, if you missed it, uh, I did play a little little song, one of my uh, favorite new songs, uh, Virus Night, COVID Night. And uh, if you missed it, you can see it on YouTube. It's there. Or maybe it's here on Facebook. I don't know. Uh, but you might want to tune in to that. I want to mention something else before we talk about another pandemic. I got another pandemic for you. Um, but Kirby McCook, I'm also reading through Kirby McCook and the Jesus Chronicles. Uh, kids love this book. And uh, if you've got an 8 to 12 year old child, uh, you can get the book at newlife.com. But I'm reading through this. You can see uh, the subtitle. A 12-year-old's take on the totally unboring, slightly weird stuff in the Bible, including fish guts, wrestling moves, and stinky feet. Not your grandmother's Bible story. But uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, another pandemic and what to do about it. And then I'm going to finish up with a, um, a devotional uh, from this Bible, the Restoration Bible. And if you've been tuning in, you know that I'll send you one of these free and all you have to do is go to Steve Social at newlife.com and I'll send you a free Bible. This is a thick Bible. It is a, it is a study Bible and a devotional Bible. And I want to read you one of the study points uh, on the exercise of faith and dealing uh, with this thing that a lot of people are having right now, and that is doubt. So we're going to talk about that. But first, um, there is something that is killing more marriages, of course, than will uh, the coronavirus or COVID-19 will ever kill people. Uh, it is something that most people believe to be true, that about 60% of men on a Sunday morning have looked at pornography that past week. Uh, one day I was uh, preaching, I was talking about the fact that about 20% of the men had read their Bible every day. And then I revealed that about 60% had done something in the area of pornography every day that previous week. Well, 20 years ago, I, I published uh, Every Man's Battle with Fred Stoker. And of course, now we have the 20th anniversary edition. There have been 4 million of these in the series sold. And I just want to make a couple of points about this. Uh, if, you, if you are struggling with pornography... There are all sorts of fatal lies that you can tell yourself. You can say, everybody's doing it. Or here's what I hear. All guys do this. And I would say this. You know, all guys do this. Guys meaning kind of the teen mindset, uh, young, rebellious guys. Insecure guys about their manhood and sexuality. Yeah, they're all doing it. But not godly men. Not men who are committed to developing character and having a wisdom beyond their years. They're not doing it. And if you want to go from being the bad little boy looking at dirty pictures to being the man that God's called you to be, a beginning part uh, point could be Every Man's Battle. Now, this Saturday, we're doing an Every Man's Battle event on live, and it's not too late for you to sign up. But you might not have a problem. You might be a woman who's married to a guy or dating a guy, and you know he's got a problem. Uh, by the way, my wife does uh, sessions. She does recovery groups for women who struggle with pornography and sexual integrity. But maybe you're married to a guy. You can tell him, hey, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Get a copy of the book. But also, when you call 1-800-NEW-LIFE, find out about this thing they're doing this Saturday. In one day... Uh, you, you can, in a very secure way, from the privacy of your own, own home or anywhere, you can go through a process of establishing sexual integrity and purity. And this group of guys that are going to help you, they've been doing it for years. And we've helped thousands of men turn this thing around. Where you go from being the bad little boy looking at dirty pictures to the godly man who's wanting something better for his life. So Every Man's Battle is the book that talks about all of that. Be a great help to you. And if you're recovering, another big help uh, is the Life Recovery Bible. And one of the things that we just published to go along with the Life Recovery Bible is a workbook to establish sexual integrity. 
And the workbook really helps you uh, to do the things that need to be, uh, be done beyond just, oh, I want it to get better or I'm upsetting somebody or, you know, things aren't going well. This is where we do the work that changes everything. And, and we've got this workbook. It parallels uh, the work that's done in the Life Recovery Bible. And so uh, you can get that at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or newlife.com. And maybe you've been recovering uh, from a sexual integrity problem for quite some time. If you get that workbook and use the Life Recovery Bible with it, it can take you to a whole new level and really an exciting uh, new dimension in your life. And I would love it uh, if you could do that. You know, a lot of times we don't know um, why we're involved with pornography. We don't know how we fell into it. It doesn't really matter. The question is uh, not do I know I have a problem or do I uh, want to get rid of it? But the question is, am I willing to do whatever it takes to have victory in this area to, to clear it up? Uh, God hates this stuff. He hates women being objectified. He doesn't hate you, uh, but he hates what Satan has done with this great gift of sexual integrity. So either tell somebody you know, hey, why don't you go do that workshop thing? Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or get them the book or get them the, the Life Recovery Bible with the workbook on sexual integrity and just see how much that person can change in such a short length of time. Nobody, nobody uh, knew what was going to happen when the Internet came along and how much access uh, has been given to pornography. And then when this virus, this COVID-19 virus hit, I don't think anybody was thinking, boy, this is going to be a windfall uh, for hardcore pornography sites. But that's exactly what has happened. With all this extra time and isolation, um, in the very beginning, 16% increase, like in the first week of, of uh, self-isolation and sheltering in place. But it's gone up from there. So if you've fallen back into it or you're into it, but even more, you're not alone. It's impacted a lot of people that way. question is, what are you going to do about it? Uh, don't do nothing. And don't just continue to do what you've been doing. You know, asking God to help you or whatever. You get the help you need. You know, God wants to do for us and with us what we can't do ourselves. But, you know, if you were immediately delivered from any desire to look at pornography, you know, just a, a supernatural healing experience, you have to ask yourself, well, if I was delivered from it, would I be delivered into character, Christian maturity, godly manhood? No, you'd need a growth plan. So even if you were delivered. Also, I've never known anybody that got delivered out of something and the spouse, uh, the family, that they were instantly, instantly delivered from their resentment or bitterness or the struggle that they've gone through with your problem. You all need a growth program. And so one of those growth programs is found in the Life Recovery Bible. Uh, another great program is Take Your Life Back. You can find out about that book at newlife.com or 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And another one is this thing called uh, Transformation. And it's not 12 steps, but it's seven steps. And it's found in the Spiritual Renewal Bible. If you don't like 12 steps, you know, Dave Stoop and I, we, we worked out seven different steps for you to follow to grow in. First, you see the reality of your situation and then you surrender your life. And surrender doesn't mean that you have to have some emotional and spiritual uh, big moment for you to surrender. Surrender can come in the form of a decision to comply with what other people are doing. In other words, you're saying to yourself, what I've been trying has not helped. So I'm going to surrender that method or that attempt and I'm going to do what some other people have tried to do. That's a whole level of surrender that God can really use. So you see it and you surrender. And then you open up to somebody about this. James 5.16, confess your sins to one another. Then we start to, after we're opening and, and looking at it and seeing it and sharing it, then I start to accept some responsibility for it. I own it. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make things right. And then I can actually start to, to kind of reverse things. 
and I can start forgiving the hurts. And then I can start using everything I've gone through to reach out to other people. And then I, it's a matter of just one fulfilling thing after another as I preserve the spiritual gains that I make. That's a seven-step process. It parallels the 12. But if you don't like 12, you can have seven. And you can find out about that at newlife.com. Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this Restoration Bible, this is the newest Bible that I have, and I'll give it to you for free. Uh, what's the catch? There isn't a catch. I want to help you during this time. Bible sales are up everywhere. And if you're uh, not wanting a Bible, uh, ask yourself, why not? <laughs> because everybody seems to be wanting God's word and God's wisdom during this time. And this is a time uh, where more people than ever are starting to doubt their faith in God. And that's what I want to end up with here tonight. Um, in this Bible, the final E in the acronym RESTORE stands for the exercise of faith. And one of the topics I deal with here is dealing with doubt. And the title of, of this particular devotional in here is called A Reliable Faith. It's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 6. That's the verse. And it says this, Then he appeared to over 500 brothers and sisters at one time. Most of them are still alive, but some have fallen asleep. So when Jesus rose up from the grave, it wasn't a matter that a couple of women saw him there at the tomb or he met with his disciples and cooked up some breakfast. Here's an example. And the person that's writing this is saying, I saw this. And here was this event over 500 people. Uh, saw Jesus after he had been tortured, crucified, put into a tomb, stone rolled away, and people started saying, hey, he's not there anymore. He has risen from the grave. When that happened, shortly thereafter, a group of 500 were there, and Jesus showed up. They were all witnesses to the resurrected Jesus Christ. Well, listen to this. Ever have troubling thoughts and nagging questions like this? I've never seen Jesus or heard him. I've never spoken to him audibly. And if I'm honest, most or much of the time, he seems more like a, like a vague idea uh, or an imaginary friend, more like that than a living presence in my life. So how can I know that my Christian faith is credible? Well, Paul cites this one very helpful evidence for doubters right here. Jesus rose from the dead, and the witnesses weren't limited to those lucky few who witnessed the miracle of him rising. There was this large crowd. Over 500 people saw him. And then Paul adds this. Most of them are still alive. The implication, if you don't want to take my word for it, He's saying, feel free to talk to one of these people that's alive. So he was writing this letter to the people in the new churches in Corinth, the Corinthians. And he says there, look, a lot of these people are still alive. You don't be, believe me. Go talk to one of these people that was in that meeting and they'll tell you it's true. Now, among the eyewitnesses, of course, were the original apostles. But remember, the night Jesus was arrested, well, Peter denied ever even knowing him. The others, they ran. And to a man, they were all devastated by the death that Jesus had been telling them was going to come all along. But something happened. Something big enough to transform these scared disciples into a team of what you would call world changers. Something that made them choose martyr martyrdom rather than renounce their faith. And what was that? These scared guys. What was it? The best explanation is what Paul said. Jesus was raised on the third day, according to the scripture, and he appeared. He was there. In truth, the only reason you're reading this right now is because these first followers of Jesus were permanently changed by the resurrection. When doubt begins to nibble at the edges of your spirit, remember that Jesus' resurrection 
and the eyewitnesses there are proof that Jesus died, rose from the grave, loves you, is at the right hand of God, making your case in the presence of God. And when we go before the Lord, Jesus says to God, he professed me before others there on earth. I want you to know I'm sponsoring him right on in to the kingdom here, Lord. Well, as I said, if you want a copy of this Bible, Steve Social at newlife.com. If you want to uh, ask a question, you can do it in the comments. You can ask me a question. Hope you'll send this to somebody. Ask them to tune in. I love getting to do this with you. It's just me and you, and I love that. And I uh, ask God's blessing of peace. Uh, I ask God to give you patience. And when in doubt with other people during this time in conflict, give them the benefit of the doubt. Be like God who is rich in mercy. Try to make it better for somebody, not worse. And you'll be the one that's blessed. If you need some help, call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And don't forget, every man's battle is this Saturday. So call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and sign up or find out enough about it so that you can tell somebody that needs it. So God bless you and uh, hope to see you here tomorrow right here on our Facebook Live broadcast. See you then.